Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very strange planet that seems to be an exposed core of a gas giant. At least that's what the scientists behind this paper believe. Let's talk a little bit more about this discovery and welcome to What The Math. In the last 10 years or so, we've discovered a lot of really unusual planets. One of such unusual planets is right here. This is known as Corit 20b. This was one of the densest planets ever discovered, and it sort of, back then and even now, defied our understanding of how planets formed. In other words, it doesn't really make sense that this planet can exist with the properties that it currently has. The major problem with this planet is that, despite its size being relatively similar to Jupiter, its mass is higher than Jupiter, meaning that it has a lot more density. The density here is even more than the density on Earth, suggesting that this unusual gas giant is not really as gassy as some of the other planets that we know of. But in terms of discovering these so-called high Jupiters, there are still a lot of mysteries that we don't really understand about them. However, there are even rarer planets out there, the type of planets we currently refer to as hot Neptunes. In other words, they are smaller, they are less massive, they are more similar to Neptune and Uranus, but they are also extremely close to the parent star, giving them extremely hot temperatures. These planets are quite rare, and especially when we look around the galaxy and discover other planets in this region. Turns out there is something known as Neptunian Desert. Essentially, planets with a mass of several masses of Earth, but less massive than Jupiter, at these really close distances to the stars, are extremely rare. The first such discovery of NGTS-4b a few years ago made the headlines because it was an extremely rare planet in this location. But now the scientists discovered something even more rare. Another unusual Neptunian planet, but this time with extremely high density, at least for a gas giant. The planet currently known as TOI-849b, discovered by the TESS telescope, seems to raise more questions than answer them. Located uh, over 700 light years away from us, it's somewhat difficult to actually analyze this in detail, but we know that this planet orbits around its star every 18 hours. The star itself is also extremely similar to our own sun, and so the temperatures on the surface here are somewhere around 1800 degrees Kelvin or about 2000 degrees Celsius. Its mass, however, is much higher than Neptune. It's about 39 masses of planet Earth, whereas Neptune is only about 17 masses of planet Earth. But in terms of the size, it's relatively similar to Neptune, which means that its density is much, much higher. It has a density of about 5.2 grams per centimeter cube, which is uh, a little bit less than our beautiful planet Earth. And this is a big deal because planet Earth is already one of the densest objects in the solar system and it's definitely the densest planet in the solar system, mostly due to the extremely large, very massive and also very dense metallic core inside our planet. Now we believe that gas giants also have cores, but because we don't really know how big and how massive they are, we never really had a chance to study them. But since this unusual object seems to be very dense and seems to be size of a typical smaller gas giant, the only reasonable explanation to what we're seeing here is that we actually are looking at an exposed core of a potentially failed gas giant or a gas giant that was slowly destroyed over time. And although this is not the most massive Neptune planet we've discovered, this is also not the densest planet that we've discovered, so far this is one of the rarest because of the combination of different factors. First being the location, known as the Neptunian Desert, second being the density of this planet, and third being the fact that we can't really explain how this object was created and what it truly represents. Because technically speaking, this is the most massive terrestrial object we've discovered so far. It's not just a super-Earth, it's more of an ultra-Earth. Its mass is close to 40 masses of planet Earth, meaning that the gravitational attraction on the surface here is at least three times higher. And normally these extremely massive, extremely large planets are expected to have very large hydrogen and helium um, atmospheres. Basically, all of the gas giants in our own solar system eventually accreted really large envelopes of gas as they were orbiting around early solar system. So the fact that this planet doesn't seem to have this really large, unusual hydrogen and helium envelope 
is a mystery right now. And there are currently two major explanations to what may have happened. It could have been a large gas giant before, but with time a lot of this gas evaporated and essentially escaped into the outer star system. However, today we believe that this process actually takes much longer, so technically this planet should still be a lot more massive than it currently is. The other explanation here is that maybe this planet got gravitationally disrupted by the star itself and a lot of its gas escaped through the tidal interactions with the star or possibly some other planet, thus leaving only the core behind. So that's one possible explanation here. But the other explanation relates to the idea of the planetary formation and just the gas present in the early star system. Here the scientists believe that maybe this planet just never really got to absorb just as much gas as some of the other objects, and although initially it may have had a lot more mass, eventually as it migrated closer and closer to the star itself, even though some planets do end up inflating and receiving even more gas from some of the other objects, this planet for some reason started to lose its gas over time, thus remaining as a kind of an undeveloped or underdeveloped core of a potential gas giant. In other words, after a few million years, um, once this planet moved to this location, it more or less stabilized, stopped losing its mass, and eventually just became a remnant core of a gas giant that never really got to be a gas giant. In other words, this could be the first ever core of a gas giant that we actually can study in detail now. And because this is something we've been wanting to do in our own solar system for a very long time, but we're simply unable to do because there's no way for us to see inside Jupiter, Saturn or other gas giants, here we might finally get our opportunity by literally looking at the core of a planet that never really got to be a true gas giant. But because it's still kind of far away, it's over 700 light years away from us, even looking and seeing this planet is still somewhat difficult. So studying this core is a bit of a challenge. Although somewhat related to that, here in our own solar system, we believe that at least one object, the asteroid known as Psyche that you see right here, is also a core of an underdeveloped planet. Not a gas giant, just a regular planet like Earth, Mercury, Mars and Venus. And in 2026, NASA is planning to launch this spacecraft to try to go and investigate Psyche and then essentially take the first ever look, direct look, at an actual core of a planet that could have been. So by studying this planet and also by studying Psyche, we might be able to understand cores of planets and possibly even discover something we currently can't even imagine. But the thing is, in this particular case, the planet it still has a little bit of an envelope. Approximately 4% of the total mass is still hydrogen and helium, meaning that some of the planet is still unfortunately covered in the atmosphere. So we don't really truly see the core itself, we see the core with a thin layer of atmosphere. In that sense though, it truly makes Toy 849b the most massive terrestrial planet we've ever discovered. It seems to possess atmosphere, it seems to possess the conditions very similar to Earth in terms of density, but it has very high gravity, obviously ridiculously hot conditions, and at the same time, is also probably evaporating its atmosphere and losing its atmosphere to the rest of the star system, meaning that at some point it will truly become a core, but just not anytime soon. And because of its terrestrial nature, the scientists behind this paper also believe that it might possess other volatiles, including water, in its atmosphere. But because of the temperatures here, all of this is extremely hot. But this doesn't mean that similar planets do not exist in other regions of similar stars. So we actually can expect to one day discover a somewhat similar planet, but somewhere on the outskirts of the star system, possibly even in the habitable zone of the star suggesting that we might one day find what seems to be the biggest Earth-like planet ever. A planet that could possess thick atmosphere, very large, possibly even global ocean, and potentially be the largest habitable world we'll ever discover. So just the fact that Toy 849b exists means that there are more similar planets somewhere out there as well. And in case you were wondering how they were able to discover both the size and the mass of this planet, it actually used two different uh, observations. The first observation from TESS used the so-called transit method to see the shadow of the planet as it passed in front of the star. This is how we were able to determine the size of this planet. Then, by using the radial velocity method, 
and the uh, apparatus known as HARPS, the scientists were able to see by how much the planet was causing the star to wobble in its orbit. These observations show us the Doppler effects, the blue shifting and the red shifting of the light coming from the star, and thus we can then determine the mass of this planet. And then using the mass and the size, we can calculate the density of the planet. And in this case, they discovered that it was about 39 masses of planet Earth, but had a size of slightly smaller than Neptune, suggesting that its density was very similar to planet Earth, thus making it a terrestrial planet. But because this is a relatively recent discovery, we don't unfortunately know anything else about the object, its origins, or really anything else about the star system. I'm sure in some of the future studies we'll discover something else about this, but for now, that's unfortunately it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.